like candles, candles yeah. and, and lamps with the Why don't we do that? Why don't we have candles, don't we? Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. So much better, isn't it? Oh, oh, it's so really much better. Oh, God. Yeah. It is so much better. I'm not doing anything. I'm just staying. I just this is really <laughs> stable. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Do you guys have tea in your room? <laughs> yes, do you yes, okay. I would love some tea, actually. <sighs> Boy, she must be really dumb. She can't, you know, all she can do is this rock thing. But boy, if I, I worked in a lab before, I mean, I, I did two years of university. I, I don't like anything else. I always get fired. <laughs> suburbs. We grew up in the suburbs of the city of Dayton, Ohio. Dayton's not big. And we were in the suburbs of Dayton, very small. They do this thing in Ohio, it's tipping cows. Do you guys tip cows? Cows sleep standing up. And then, so pre-university high school kids will get drunk, go to the cornfields where the cows are. And then when the cow's asleep, they tip them over. And when the cow lands down, when the cow lands on its side, that's when it wakes up. It's not very nice. I, I haven't done it. But that's, that's an, an indication of what there isn't to do in Ohio. Kelly went to see The Song Remains the Same. It's a Led Zeppelin live thing experience. And she did some acid that night and she came back and I was sitting on the back porch sneaking a cigarette and she just said, oh, I, you know, we, I know what we have to do now. I know what I'm gonna do. So I just ripped it off, I ripped off the idea from her. I got an electric guitar first. I never played it. Then I got an acoustic guitar, and then I learned how to play that. That makes more noise. You don't have to put an amp in. You know, it's less hassle. And I learned from the Neil Young Easy Guitar Book. Because that's good, because, you know, there's some bands you can't learn from, like uh, a jazz band. You know, you're going to have to diminish something in the first chord that you even learn. But Neil Young is like C, G, A. And you got Heart of Gold. And if you use Neil Young, easy guitar, you always know when it goes bad. You always know when you're wrong because everybody can always go, I wanna live, bling, I wanna live, bam, bum, 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 I keep on. So you always know when you're gonna get it wrong. So then you go, oh wait, that was wrong. Oh, oh. D. I still do that. No, I don't. We did, we did stuff together in high school. Uh, we played at truck stops. You guys have truck stops, don't you? We played at truck stops. We didn't, Bar, biker bars, you know, because in Ohio you could do, you could play a couple different types of places. One is the rock club, and those are the kids, and they like heavy metal, Night Ranger, Toto, Journey, Foreigner, Cover Axe. They got spandex, long hair, and they are gonna rock you. So of course we couldn't play there. No, we didn't even want to, but even if we wanted to, we couldn't play there. If you were a girl, you could only play tambourine. 
you know, or do backups. You could never play guitar or do anything of any substance on stage like that. But um, we, so we, were, the other outlets were truck stops, country bars, biker bars. But you know, they were. It's weird because when you see this big, huge biker with this big beard and he's just old and mean, tattoos with his Harley outside, those people would come in and listen to girls singing. You know, Delaney and Bonnie, Blind Faith songs. You know, Hank Williams, you know, they'll actually listen to it. Whereas young kids who want to see rock music, foreigner, foreigner, you know, they don't want to see a girl, and, you know. So we played it at the biker. We did cool, what we thought was cool music in front of, you know, these, it was weird. And then I was, got married to this guy. And within a few months after that, I moved to Boston. When, when I moved to Boston, looked at the first thing I did was look in the back of the papers, and there was this ad uh, looking for a female bass player into Husker Du and Peter Paul and Mary. It was in the first week I met Joe and David. We didn't have a name or anything. We used to practice in my bedroom with a drum machine that I had. And then uh, we had actually flown Kelly over because she played drums in high school. And uh, we thought she would play drums with us, but she said no. She turned us down. It's always this question, what's it like to be a woman in rock? And it's just an unanswerable question. I just go, oh, really good. You think that's a male approach? No, even girls question? say it. No, even girls say it. Girl journalists say, you know, what's it like to be a woman in rock? And then I usually go, well, what's it like to be a woman journalist? You know, you can tell what it's like to be a journalist, but you don't know what it's like to be a woman journalist. You know, I got bigger breasts than the next guy. I don't know. I have no idea. But you've been in a, a band with uh, three men. Right. Now you're in a band with three women. Right. Is there much difference? It gives me a great perspective because I can tell there is no difference at all. The road crew, a, a local road crew or local monitor guy who's working the club is just as shitty to the Pixies as they are to the Breeders. And sometimes the women who work with me think, oh, you know, if I was a guy, I think that they'd be a lot nicer. It's like, no way, man. They're just dicks. They were, were their ass. So I worked with them before. They were a dick to Joe last time. You know, but there is a different atmosphere in the band, maybe? No, no, because Kelly's more bullish and more, uh, more of a slob and more just yicky. And like David Lovering is like almost prissy. You know, he's almost a priss. Televisie opvangen. I remember in Ohio, people wouldn't play with me. I remember there was a drummer we interviewed with the Pixies. He found out I was married and he laughed. He laughed. It's like, I'm not going to be in a band with you. He ended up being in the band for like a day, then he quit because we weren't rocking. We see him sometimes in Boston. <laughs> It's like you're not gonna, no one's gonna give it to you, that's for sure. And it's not gonna come that naturally, so you have to, you have to be a little pushy. And um, 
of course, there's all these ways you can have it given to you, like if you take your clothes off or, you know, if you sing a certain way or if you let a record company tell you how to be, you know, then, then you can get whatever you want. Sometimes you feel, as a strong woman, you have to come across bitchy or they don't listen to you. I can't tell you how many times I've said things in different tones of voices. And every single time, no, nothing is heard until I use the bitchy tone. I can use any other tone in the book. I can speak softly, I can be sweet, I can come up and kind of say, could you help me with this? I can like try any ploy in the world. Bitchy gets it done like that. And sometimes when you have a lot to do, God, you just want to get it done, you know? And so it's really dangerous. I often feel like I'm losing touch with things about women that I really like. I like softness. I like, like, you know, interaction and warmth and kind of not harsh tone. I like a lot of things about typical feminine behavior. And I want them to remain in my personality. But, you know, doing what I do now, and I know you must feel some of these same things, you just have to be like, there, there. And then they get threatened completely. They look at you as boss. You're the boss. You know, fine, lady, sir. Yeah, I'll move it. You know what I mean? I never said nothing. No, baby, I... Well, going back to the society in which we live, the way it is, it isn't equal yet. Yeah, <laughs> oh,